everybody. This presentation is going to tell you how to practice safe computing tips. So let's get started. Safe computing tips. We're going to keep ourselves, keep yourself, your information, and your computer safe in the digital world. So our objectives for this presentation, we're going to learn about the various types of computer viruses. We're going to learn how to spot computer viruses, learn how to avoid virus attacks, discover some leading antivirus software applications. Also, we're going to analyze some various email schemes, learn about phishing schemes, and determine best password practices. All right, so let's take a look at malware. Malware is software that has malicious intent. So you can see where the, the mal and the where come from, malware, right? Um, different types of malware. A virus sneaks from computer to computer and copies itself to the, your hard disk. Uh, it can move about in many forms, but most popular are as email attachments or an infected web page image. Now, a Trojan horse uh, purports to do one function, but actually performs another less desirable task. Usually, the program is knowingly installed by the user. A worm is a spread from one machine to another rapidly without human action. So usually uh, the computer user doesn't know what's going on. It doesn't know that's on there. How can we spot some computer viruses? Um, criminals often send viruses through emails, making it important to be able to recognize potential email threats. Uh, let's look at the subject line in an email. Does it say something suspicious like, need cash now or you may have already won well generally guys and gals if it sounds too good to be true usually it is all right here's another one you won an ipad wow how about that let me click on that button and put in my uh, personal information right uh, use caution with attachments in emails uh, many times viruses are assigned a file extension like .exe or .vbs uh, executable files um, trying to uh, trick you into clicking on those and running those on your computer. Uh, do you recognize the sender? If I, you don't recognize the sender of the email, it is best practice not to open the email. And do not follow web links unless you are sure they are safe. Sometimes a link can direct you to a website that downloads a virus to your computer. Spotting computer viruses continued. Spelling and grammar companies and organizations usually have copywriters who proofread emails for errors before they are sent. So if there's a lot of spelling mistakes and uh, improper grammar, that could be a, a key there that that's a virus. Also, uh, a generic greeting. Uh, fraudulent emails are often sent in large uh, batches or groups, and criminals will use generic greetings like dear internet user or dear sir or dear madam. And they don't really know your name. Other ways to avoid attacks. Do not open emails or attachments from unfamiliar email addresses. Uh, even if it is a, a familiar email address, you need to use caution. A lot of times uh, a computer virus will send out uh, the virus uh, using uh, the, the uh, infected person's email account and they'll send it out to everyone in their email address book. And so some people may say, oh, I know that person. They must have sent me an email. So they click on the link. But uh, most of the times, uh, it's not the case that the person doesn't realize that they had, their uh, account has been hacked and uh, the email is not really from the person that you think it is. So if you get an email from someone that you haven't talked to in a long time and you're wondering why they're sending you a random link, it's a good chance their computer is infected and that indeed is a computer virus that's trying to get you to click on it. Question suspicious attachments from people that you do know, like I just talked about. You may could even call them or send them a text message or a separate email. Hey, did you send me a link? Are you trying to get me to click on this? I was just, you know, just checking, make sure. Uh, right click the pop up task bar or use the task manager to close pop up ads and use tools to prevent viewing potentially dangerous sites. There is some free anti spyware options that are pretty good. I have used the top one there on the right, super anti spyware. Uh, there are some reliable anti software. Any spyware software downloads, uh, they usually offer a free version and then a better paid version for more protection. So super anti, uh, super anti spyware is one and uh, Panda is also another one that's popular. 
Here is some more anti-spyware uh, choices for you uh, that are also uh, reputable and free. And remember, a lot of these free versions will give you uh, some basic protection, and most of the time they'll want you to pay and you know upgrade for some other ones. Uh, Spybot Search and Destroy right there in the middle has been around for quite a while. And uh, some Norton uh, malware bytes, there's all different versions right there. All right, so let's take a look at some antivirus software. Uh, it's a computer program that detects, prevents, and takes action to disarm or remove malicious software programs such as worms and viruses. So McAfee and Norton are both well-known antivirus software programs. Been around for quite a while. Uh, millions of uh, you know customers over the world over the years, I'm sure. Uh, there are some free antivirus software versions that uh, options that are pretty good. Of course, both of these offer you know, paid versions trying to get you to upgrade. I've used both of these in the past. Uh, Avast is the one on the top there. Uh, I haven't used it as much recently, but it's uh, really good. And there's a look at its interface right there. And AVG Antivirus Free Edition is good. And of course, AVG will also try to get you to upgrade on their other, uh, you know, more secure features by, by paying. Updates to your computer are very important. So whenever your computer wants to do Windows updates, if assuming you're running Windows, uh, you want to keep your operating system and applications up to date. So that is uh, safe practices there. Uh, updates also close security loopholes, provide critical updates, and protect against threats online. So always let your computer do the updates when it needs to. Spam and email fraud. Let's take a look at this. Spam is an internet slang term referring to unsolicited junk email or online communication that is sent to many recipients. So spam is a long time problem. Uh, spam was originally, you know, a, a, a meat. It still is a meat, but somehow these junk emails became uh, known as spam. So that's where that, that word comes from. Let's take a look at some of these fraudulent email schemes. The primary goal of the internet scam is to trick someone into giving them money or sharing information. Uh, do not respond to these emails. You should delete them. So here's an example of one. I've received one like this in the past. Uh, your iTunes account has been uh, locked for various reasons. Uh, and then they want you to click on this link and you know secure your account. So so suppose you know so you know you don't click on it though because it's a trick. They're trying to get you to click on a, a, a bogus link. So you put in your iTunes information and now all of a sudden they have access to your account and they can go in there and buy things and charge things on, on your dime, right? On your credit card that's on file, right? So be extremely careful anytime you receive stuff like this. I consider myself to be a fairly savvy internet user and uh, get these things, you know, from time to time. And sometimes I'm, you know, they got, they have me really thinking, is this, is this for real or is this a fake? You know, and most of the time I'm, I've come to the conclusion that it's fake. Some other examples of email scams. Uh, some examples could include uh, dating scams and investment scheme scams, claims that you've won the lottery or, you know, that iPad, that free iPad, uh, or you need to pay a speeding ticket, or maybe you have a friend that needs money so they can get bailed out of jail, or maybe they're, uh, you know, maybe they're in jail across uh, in another country and they, they need help and they need someone to send them money because they've been arrested unfairly or something like that. Phishing schemes. Uh, this is an attempt to steal sensitive information like usernames, passwords, social, social security numbers and credit card numbers. So just like I showed you with the iTunes uh, fake uh, website there, they're trying to get you to click on that to trick you into thinking it's really the iTunes website or uh, PayPal, you know, notorious for uh, people trying to do that to PayPal's website, put in your PayPal information here to secure your account and it's really not PayPal, right? So that's never gonna happen. Most reputable websites will never ask you to do that, okay? Uh, legitimate companies will never ask for your sensitive information in an email. So let's look at some password best practices. So the whole purpose of a password is to keep your information private and secure and safe. Some strong passwords use uppercase and lowercase letters, numbers and symbols, eight or more characters minimum. Uh, don't use information that is easy or personal or easy to guess. 
Don't share your passwords with anyone. That should be obvious, right? And change your password frequently or use a different password for every site that you visit. Uh, here are some examples of some passwords. This would be examples of weak passwords. Just the word password or simple names or numbers uh, in, you know, in sequent, uh, counting up numbers. Uh, those are all weak passwords, as you can see why. Those are not very strong, right? Let's take a look on the right side at some stronger passwords. These use uh, upper and lowercase letters. Uh, they use uh, symbols and, uh, and all kinds of crazy combinations, right? And they don't spell out any words. So you can see right there that those would be much harder for someone to be able to guess or to hack you know, your, your own passwords, right? All right, so in conclusion, computer users need to be vigilant and knowledgeable about the threats they face online and how they can protect themselves. Uh, you need to protect yourself, guys and gals out there. Be safe. Enjoy being on the computer, but just be smart and be careful what you do. Thanks for watching.